Take a look at the marvels of everyday technological inventions around you. Your phone alone houses a dozen different tools that we would have been carrying around just a couple decades ago, like cameras and calculators. Sometimes, tool tools created independently of each other can run into a little funny behavior when they interact. If you've ever shot video, you may have noticed they flicker in the image when you go back to edit it. The flicker is caused by the artificial lights available in the scene combined with certain frame rate and shutter speed combinations. This appears as distracting flashes in the video and is almost always undesirable. If you're wondering how to stop camera light video flicker when shooting with artificial lights, then you are in the right place. Hang on till the end of this video because I'm going to explain the causes of light flicker in your video and films and offer four tips on how to correct the problem to improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking work. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. I want to get going on the topic quickly, but do stick around till the end of this video because I'll tell you about some freebies and training courses I offer to improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking work, and to help grow your business through something known as earned media exposure, which is basically through free advertising. If you like what you see, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video each and every Wednesday. Remember, I welcome all your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. Let's begin by discussing why the flicker occurs when shooting video with your camera, where there are artificial lights being used. The artificial lights at your shoot location, such as fluorescent lights, computer monitors, lamps, LED screens, and much more are not continuously on as our eyes might lead us to believe. Instead, they turn on and off at a certain frequency. Different countries use different frequencies. All of North America, parts of South America, and Japan use a 60 hertz frequency, while in Europe, Africa, and Asia, they use 50 hertz. Why is this? Well, there are many historical factors responsible for this divide, but in a nutshell, it comes down to economics. At the turn of the 20th century, to avoid competing with one another, manufacturers in America focused on producing 60 hertz products and equipment, while manufacturers in the UK focused on producing 50 hertz equipment. Each region established its own monopoly where only its products would be able to work and the rest is history. Let's not kid ourselves, it always comes down to money. It's worth mentioning that 50 and 60 hertz are not arbitrary frequencies. They were chosen for very specific reasons. Certain lights tend to flicker when a low frequency current is run through them. If the frequency is sped up to 50 hertz, the flickering is still present but goes unnoticed by the human eye. How does household electrical frequencies affect your video? As mentioned, at 50 Hz, the flickering effect goes unnoticed by the human eye. The key word being human. The camera's eye, its sensor in other words, can still see this flicker. What causes this flickering effect? You can blame the Hertz. All right, not really. The Hertz is a unit of frequency that defines cycles per second. So, if the lighting in your location is running at 60 Hertz, this is just a fancy way of saying that the electricity flowing into the lighting is cycling on and off 60 times per second. For 50 Hertz, it cycles on and off 50 times per second. While the human eye does not detect this turning on and off, off, there is a subtle dimming of the light during each of these on-off cycles. It is this dimming that our camera is seeing and recording and thus causing the flicker. You can experience camera light video flicker when your camera is out of sync with this frequency when shooting either video or still photos. Yes, this does happen when taking photos as well, when you're not using a flash. What happens is that one image you take might be when the available light is on and thus properly exposed, while another is taken when the light is off, giving you a very different lighting result, even though your camera settings remained identical because it's underexposed because the light is off when the shutter was open. In video, the same applies, except 
each frame varies at a very high speed, so you see a flickering effect when you play it back. You see this flicker as a pulsing effect, almost like a strobe light. So how do you prevent flicker in your video? It all comes down to synchronization. If you synchronize your camera to the electrical frequency of the lighting, you are basically telling your camera to only take pictures of the on portion of each cycle within the frequency. So how do you achieve this synchronization? There are four options. Number one is change your camera's frequency setting either NTSC or PAL. Thankfully, many cameras today have the option to change frequencies between 50 Hertz PAL or 60 Hertz NTSC. If your camera has this option, simply match your camera's frequency with the electrical frequency of your environment. Once set to the correct frequency, you can safely use any of the frame rates or shutter speeds that your camera offers. Number two, change your shutter speed or shutter angle. If you can't change your camera's frequency, or if your client requires you to shoot in a specific frequency, there is a workaround. You can sync your shutter speed to the electrical frequency of your environment. The chart you're seeing shows some commonly used frame rates and corresponding safe shutter speeds or angles. This graph shows shooting under 60 Hertz lighting. If your frame rate is 60P or 60I, any shutter speed or shutter angle will be safe. If your frame rate is 30p, again, any shutter speed or shutter angle will be safe. If your frame rate is 24p, any shutter speed or any shutter angle will be safe. If you're shooting 50p or 50i, a safe shutter speed would be 1 60th or 1 20th. A safe shutter angle would be 300 or 150. If your frame rate is 25p, safe shutter speeds would be 1 40th, 1 60th or 1 20th of a second. Safe shutter angles would be 225, 150 or 75. This graph shows shooting under 50 Hertz lighting, which is in Europe and Asia. If your frame rate is 60p or 60i, a safe shutter speed would be 1 100th of a second and a safe shutter angle would be 216. If your frame rate is 30p, safe shutter speeds would be 133.3, 1 50th or 1 100th of a second. Safe shutter angles would be 324, 216 or 108. If you're shooting in 24p, safe shutter speed would be 1 one thirty third point three, or 1 50th or 1 100th of a second. Safe shutter angles would be 259.2, 172.8, or 86.4. If your frame rate is 50p or 50i, any shutter speed or shutter angle will be safe. And if your frame rate is 25p, any shutter speed or shutter angle will be safe because those again are multiples of 50. Number three, you can also change the frames per second that you're shooting at. In order to do this, the country frequency needs to be able to be multiplied or divided by whole numbers. For those of you who have forgotten your grammar school math from your school days as a kid, whole numbers are numbers that don't have decimals or fractions. So one, two, three, four, five, and on you go. Let's take the United States as an example. If you're in the US, you need to set your camera to shoot at 60 frames per second because the AC frequency is 60 Hertz. Many entry level cameras can't shoot this fast, especially when shooting in 4K. Although when shooting at a lower resolution, like 19 by 20, 1080, which is high def, you will most likely have the option to shoot at 60 frames per second or even 120 frames per second should you have a more recent camera from the past couple of years. Even mobile phones deliver these frame rates today if they're brand new. 120 frames per second will deliver flicker-free results because it's a whole number multiple of 60. 60 times 2 equals 120. If your camera only shoots at 30 frames per second, like the Sony a7, which shoots at 4K 30 FPS, then that's fine as well, because it's a whole number division of 60. 60 divided by 2 is 30, half of 60. When it won't work is if you want to shoot 4K at 25 frames per second or 24 frames per second or something else while in the US. Then you will receive a flicker in your footage because 24 and 25 are not whole number multiples of 60. 25 times 2 is 50, 24 times 2 is 48, neither of which are 60. But if you were in Europe, Asia, or Africa and you shot at 25 frames per second, 
then it would work perfectly because their AC current is 50 hertz, as I mentioned, and 25 times 2 is 50. So depending upon where you are in the world at the time of shooting, this will determine what frames per second you will need to set your camera to so you can match the respective hertz frequency of that area. It's very easy, really, just something to keep in mind, and it's the best way to avoid the problem in the first place. Obviously, I can't cover every single shutter speed and frame rate combinations, but I also don't have to. There are lots of calculators available online to do this work for you. All you need to do is plug in the power frequency where you are and the frame rate and the calculators will let you know what safe shutter angles or shutter speeds you can use. I'll link to one that I found online for you in the description below. What if you're shooting motion blur? If you own a camera that can shoot 60 frames per second or more, then you need to understand that it requires a faster shutter speed to go with it in order for the motion blur to be displayed correctly. How much motion blur you want is up to you, but most movies use a standard motion blur rule, such as the 180 degree shutter rule. The 180 degree shutter rule says to make sure your shutter speed is at least double that of the frame rate to get that film look motion blur that you're after. America, remember, uses 60 hertz. So if you're shooting a non-slow motion video at 4K 30 FPS, in the United States, then it's best to shoot at 1 60th shutter speed. If you have the Panasonic GH5 and want to shoot at 60 FPS slow motion, then you need to have a shutter speed of at least 1 1 25th of a second. If you have a Sony A7 and want to shoot FHD at 120 FPS, then you need a minimum shutter speed of 1 250th. This is because 1 240th of a second shutter speed doesn't exist, so the closest shutter speed that is at least double is 1 250th of a second. Now remember, Europe uses 50 hertz. So if you're shooting a non-slow motion video at 4K 25 FPS in Europe, then it's best to shoot at 1 50th of a second shutter speed. With the Panasonic GH5 camera shooting at 4K 50 FPS slow motion, then you have to have a shutter speed of at least 1 100th, again, because it's double. With the Sony A7, you want to shoot FHD at 100 FPS, then you need a minimum shutter speed of 1 200th. Remember, double what your frame rate is. You need to remember that slow motion causes less light. This is very important to remember when shooting slow motion, no matter what the resolution is that you're using. As mentioned earlier, the more slow motion you want to shoot, the faster your shutter speed needs to be. A faster shutter speed allows less light through than a slower shutter speed. So the more slow motion you shoot, the darker your scenes will become, meaning you need more light for shooting in slow motion. Thus, you need to take into consideration how well your camera performs under low light conditions. The better the ISO performance that you have, the faster you can push the shutter speed in order to achieve slow motion in low light situations, but this does add grain to your footage. This isn't such an issue if you're shooting slow motion outside in the middle of the day, but if you're planning on shooting a low light scene in slow motion, then you will definitely need more artificial light to assist you. And what all this means is that you want to watch your shutter speed when shooting slow motion under artificial lighting because the flicker problem will be exasperated. I've actually done a number of videos on shooting in slow motion and on how to create great motion blur and other things such as the 180 degree rule. And I will link to those in the description below as well for you. Number four, if all else fails, the sun does not flicker. Remember, the sun is a constant light source, so you can shoot at any setting when outside, no matter what country you're in. Just remember that if there are any artificial lights that show up while outside and you are on the wrong setting, the camera video flicker will still show up. And one important note, not all artificial lights pulse either. More expensive and dedicated studio lights are made to pulse at a very high frequency, above 60 Hertz, so they actually look as though they are constantly on, solving the flickering issue altogether. They're technically not, but it doesn't matter because your camera doesn't see that. Unless, of course, you're shooting at a higher frame rate for slow motion, in which case it would. But let's just assume that you're not. There are potentially other complications as well. 
your results may vary depending upon the characteristics of your particular lighting. For example, artificial lighting may flicker independent of the power source with some neon and LED lights and when the bulbs are near failure or are improperly seated inside the unit. Also, try to avoid high frame rates greater than the lighting pulse rate, as I mentioned, when possible, or use artificial lighting that provides continuous illumination. In other words, it doesn't cycle on and off. Regardless, always capture test footage to verify that everything appears as intended in the actual footage, because if we just use your eye, it ain't gonna work. Another complication is that power doesn't always cycle precisely as expected. The frequency can vary by up to about 1%, depending upon the power plant load, in which case there may be no shutter speed or frame rate that is a perfect divisor of the lighting pulse rate. In those situations, using a flicker-free shutter speed will usually provide the best results. If you want to know how to fix flickering lights when editing, be sure to check out the companion video I did on fixing flicker in post. It's very easy to do and takes just a few steps. Now link to that video in the description below so you can watch it after watching this video and you can learn even more. This is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, have you ever experienced flicker in your video or film shoots? And if so, how did you solve the problem? Leave a comment below and let us know. I'm sure that there are ideas that you can include that will help your fellow filmmakers videographers and photographers out. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd like to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please do like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,600 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR, mirrorless, or video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos, and particularly your videos, to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques, such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training course for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up in editing video in under two hours and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors to get you started in the program and makes your workflow go much faster. Now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising because the program is geared to get you free advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you, as well as links to get more information. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, or by hiring me to shoot and edit for you. Remember, I've also done other videos on filmmaking and video production and photography as well, and I'll link to those in the description below. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, 
You know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers just like you on Facebook where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own talent, skills, and experiences. The group is private and only for people in the filmmaking, video production, and photography industries that I personally work in myself. It's not a public group like my business Facebook page that I talked about earlier. That's public and anyone can see that because I want them to be able to find it so they can hire me to shoot you know, and edit and work for them. You're gonna find a link to that group in the description below. So feel free to join it where you can learn even more.